At the back of our bungalow, we have this massive patio. And underneath it lives an old rubble soak away right here, which is meant to take all of the rainwater from about two thirds of the roof of our bungalow. I say meant to because it's not really working anymore. Rubble soakaways are an old fashioned solution. They're not very efficient, they're not very effective. And they only tend to last about 10 years before they need renewing. I don't know how long this one has been in use, but I do know that it needs replacing for two reasons. First, every time we have heavy rainfall, this area of the ground sinks. You can see it's still sunken now, and I've refilled this with gravel several times, but it keeps disappearing. And secondly, in recent months during heavy rainfall, the patio starts to flood. You can see what I mean from this footage taken back in May this year. And not only is the soakaway knackered, but I know that the pipes that run to the soakaway are not up to standard. Because back in December last year, one of the pipes was blocked. We had a drainage guy around to try and unblock it, but that didn't work. On the plus side though, he did help us to identify exactly where the old soakaway was because he put an inspection camera down the pipes. I ended up having to bodge the guttering by running two down pipes into one pipe in the ground, which let's face it, looks pretty ugly and clearly isn't working either. Hence the flooding issue. The pipes underground which measure only 70 millimeters in diameter and should measure 110 millimeters in diameter simply cannot cope with the volume of water that's coming through. I'm gonna be running the 110 mil pipe in the gap between the patio and the bungalow, which means I first need to remove all of this gravel and lots of soil beneath. This gravel is gonna be useful later, although we're going to need much, much more than this. And I got all of the topsoil bagged up as I found that it's much easier to find someone to take it away who can make use of it if it's already bagged up. I'm going to try to do this whole project without dismantling the cat enclosure so that Mickey can carry on enjoying the sun. I might have a slight problem. So this part of the building is an extension built in the late 80s or early 90s we believe. And down here the trench is looking really good. Plenty of space for the 110mm pipe. But over here is the original 1930s part of the bungalow. You can see that the extension stops here and this is the original part of the bungalow. And down here we have some concrete footings which I think are going to get in the way of our 110 mil pipe. So there are a couple of options here. Either I can just cut away those bits of concrete but I don't really want to be messing with the footings of a 1930s bungalow. Alternatively, I could cut a straight line down these slabs and take one or two inches off them. But before I do anything else, I need to close up this gap so that the cats can't escape. This is the 110 millimeter pipe and later in the video, I'll be covering the total costs for this project. And by offering it up, I can see that it's not going to go in there with the footings in the way. So I used my cutoff saw to take off about 50 millimeters from the edge of the slabs. Right, so I've got all of my digging done now. I've gone down to about 350 millimeters at that end and about 250 millimeters at this end. And that's because obviously I want to fall on the pipe so that all of the water flows this way. I've also got both of my down pipes temporarily diverted over this way, just so that if it rains, all of that water will be diverted away from the house. And it's a good job I did that because it rained a lot that evening. I got the end from the old pipe removed. This is down pipe, so it should never have been used underground in the first place. It's not big enough and it's nowhere near robust enough either. And now I can start thinking about setting my gullies. This is called a double socket gully because there's one on each side. This just unplugs. So all of the water from the down pipe will flow into this and any silt or debris will be collected in here so that it can be cleared out. And that's good because I don't want all of that silt and debris going to my soak away and filling it up. This is where my down pipe is going to be. And luckily this top part can be twisted round and that means I can set this here, which is gonna be really handy because obviously those concrete foundations are over there and I've got more space over here. I want to leave plenty of space around the gully so that we can reposition things later if necessary. And I need to cut back that pipe a bit further to free up space. And the other end I'll be using something called a low back P-trap because I won't have to dig as deep for that as I would with a gully. 
So the old soak away, which is over here, is only two metres away from the bungalow. And according to building regulations, soak aways cannot be built within five metres of a building or a road. However, that's not always practical. In order to get our new soak away five metres away from the property, we'd need to be digging over here beyond this retaining wall, which would mean we'd need to excavate a ridiculous amount of soil to even get down to the level of the patio and then dig down probably about another two metres beyond that. And to be able to dig that deep, we'd need a digger much larger than we would be able to fit around here at the back of our property. Bearing in mind that access is via a very narrow path with a tight corner and there's no other access route at the back of the property. So what we're going to do is put the soak away right here in the corner as far away as we can practically get it from the bungalow. And I have no concerns about that seeing as it's going to be much further away than the old soak away and also it's going to be much more effective because we're going to be using the plastic crates which will obviously hold a much greater volume of water. To figure out how big our soak away needed to be and how many crates were needed was not an easy task. It is explained in part H of the building regs, but I couldn't get my head around it to be honest. It involves some maths that I found too complicated. A basic rule of thumb though is that for 50 square meters of roof space, you need at least one cubic meter of water storage space. But please do your own research if you're doing a similar project and consult a drainage engineer if you want to make sure you get it right. I managed to pick these up on Facebook Marketplace, which saved me a lot of money. And I've hired one of these, which to be honest, I have no idea how to use. And that's why I've asked for help from a good friend. How was your drive? Is all right? This is Aiden, self builder and DIYer, whose YouTube channel, The Aiden Project, is one of my favorites. Aiden has his own video about this project too. I'll leave links in the description box. So it doesn't fit. <laughs> what do you mean? We had two obstructions to navigate, the first being this brick archway, which to be honest, I'd have happily knocked down if we had to. The guy said basically, the roll bar folds down, but he offered it up and said, no, it's not gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> so we might have to knock the wall down as well. We just take it off. Does it just unbolt, does it? Yeah, so that one, that one, and that one. I'm glad Aiden knows what he's doing because actually taking the whole roll bar off was a pretty quick job. Oh yes. We also needed to get it around this corner. So this is a one ton micro digger chosen for its small size. A mini digger would have been the next size up, but based on Aiden's knowledge, I don't think we'd have managed to get it around the back. That's easy. First job is to get the slabs lifted, and they came up easy. Right, have we got any drains? We haven't got any drains here. There used to be a lean-to here, and you see that little port in the ground there? Yeah. That goes to the soak away as well. We're gonna hit it at some point, but it's redundant, so it doesn't matter. No electric. Electric's at the other side. Water is this side, but it only goes that far. We haven't got gas. So hopefully it's just a Saxon hold that we find. Yes. Are you going to split it? That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we should dig this first. Okay. Washing up liquid helps to lubricate the rubber seals, making it easier to push the components together. And we can get the pipes fitted in the trench. Here's that low back P-trap that I mentioned. Aidan had a spare one of these, which he brought with him. Then we can get another pipe in to connect to the other side of the gully. And we checked there was a good fall on the pipes with a spirit level. Then in goes a coupler so that we can add another length of pipe later. And at the end we'll have a 45 degree bend. And the location of that tells us where we'll need to take up more slabs ready to dig the trench. The digger came with different sized buckets and we'll need the small one so we get that fitted. We found that redundant pipe pretty quickly and this has been concreted in, so we had a bit of a fight on our hands with this. Hey. So I'm just gonna be mostly shifting soil to the front of the house in a wheelbarrow while Aiden operates the digger, although I will get to have a go on the digger myself later. Right, I've dug this roughly 500 mil deep. And the reason why that is because we need a little bit of a fall. We can aim for the pipe going through here. I've put my ramp across, so it's safer. And we're gonna start digging the massive hole.
here's the moment I realized my wheel could use some oil. Right, so we've dug down to 1.25 meters down there and we've actually hit sand, which means it's free draining. Finding sand only about 600 mil underneath the soil was amazing news as it means all the water that goes into the new soak away will be able to drain away really easily. It also means I won't have to buy any sand when it comes to relaying the slabs. It was at this point when we made an archaeological discovery, some Chinese export porcelain, which seemed to be at least a metre underground and it blows my mind to think how long ago this must have been left there and how good it still looks. Also found a bit of a smoking pipe. So that's like 1.6 metres. So we've only got 70 mil big in depth more on that bigger anyway, so what we could do is do two layers and then just drop it down lower so we've got more coverage on top, so maybe four or five hundred mil coverage. Here's me having a quick go with the digger. This was more difficult than I expected. I think it's one of those things you need to do a fair bit before the controls start to feel natural, but it was fun having a go. At this point we started putting some of the sand to one side as we'd need some to go over the top. Then we could work on getting the bottom of the hole nice and flat. <laughs> I want to be in my workshop. <laughs> Pushing things through a saw. I could have done that with a digger, but I thought I'd just make it. <laughs> <laughs> I had two tons of 10 mil gravel at the front of the house to move around to the back. At the bottom of the hole, we want a layer about 100 millimeters deep. and the crates are going to get wrapped in this geotextile membrane which will allow moisture to pass through it but it'll prevent the crates from taking in any silt or soil. And we got some cable ties around the crates just so they are locked together. First the bottom layer and then we can get the second layer of crates in and then we can wrap the membrane around. And then loads more gravel which is going to hold the membrane in place so it can't move around. It was a lot of work moving all this gravel, it just seemed to keep disappearing down the sides and it felt like it would never end. I was pretty relieved when we finally had 100mm of gravel on top and all of the sides filled. Then we could connect it all up by adding the final bits of pipe. Once Aidan got the pipe inserted, he wrapped around some more membrane just to make sure no debris can get inside. We are going to have 500 mil cover, Perfect. which is uh, as per Rex. Yay, we're doing something okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> and then yet more gravel to cover the pipes, and this was the last of the two tons. Because we had some membrane left, we decided to add another layer on top of the gravel, which isn't something that's necessary, but we figured we might as well use it. And then we can backfill, and I cannot describe to you just how exhausted I was by this point. I don't think I've ever worked so hard in a day in all my life, moving all that soil and gravel. We'd started about 9am, had a short break for lunch, and it was about 8pm at this point, so a long day. Aidan stuck around for some pizza and then hit the road. Honestly can't thank him enough, please do go over and check out his channel and subscribe. The following day I just had some final bits to finish up. I picked up about 10 small bags of gravel so that I could fill the trench. 
and I can get the hopper fitted to the low back P-trap. I have no idea why this is called a hopper, by the way. I'm sure someone can tell us in the comments. And the downpipes needed a little bit of repositioning, but it was a quick and easy job to get them all connected. And finally, I wasn't too keen on how the gullies looked just with the gravel around them, so I mixed up some concrete, and I really enjoy this kind of job. So that's the soakaway done and we've had a bit of rainfall and everything seems to be working perfectly. At the end of most of my DIY jobs I like to consider whether it was worthwhile to DIY it rather than going through the hassle of getting a professional in and 9 times out of 10 it's a big yes but on this one I'm not so sure. It was really hard work and because there was only one of me and one wheelbarrow I was the one who was slowing things down because Aidan could scoop up the soil in no time and I just couldn't clear it quick enough. I reckon if we'd have had one more person working with us and one more wheelbarrow we'd have had it done hours before we managed to finish so I probably should have asked for some more help. The total cost of this job was £614.80, which I think is really good. I got the eight soak away crates plus the huge piece of membrane from a guy on Facebook. I did buy another roll of membrane though, and we used that too. The pipe and fittings I got from Screwfix as it worked out cheaper than anywhere else. The micro digger hire for one day from a local company was £80. I think that's a great price. And then there was the cost of the two ton bags plus 10 small bags of 10 mil gravel. We are probably going to have to spend an additional £160 to get all of the soil picked up by a grab lorry. But before I arrange that, I'm going to make use of some of that sand to lay the slabs back down. I'm not going to do a video on that because I've already done a couple of videos about laying slabs, which I'll link to below. Huge thanks again to Aidan. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.